Good day Grade 11s, welcome to your third lesson of probability in week 30. In this lesson we're going to be revising our Venn diagram, stuff that you actually learned last year. So let's get going. First of all, a Venn diagram is a graphical way of representing relationship between sets and each set is represented by a circle. So if you look over here you can see that we've got set B, we've got set A and we've got set C and then we have the universal set. So for example example, this could be um, all girls with letters starting with J, this could be J girls, this could be all guys with names starting with letter P, this would be guys with names starting with letter P, and this could be um, all the girls starting with the name letter C, so this would be C girls. And then this universal set would be all the names, all the names for males and females, for the girls and boys. Okay, so that would be our universal set and we'd have some subsets and you'll see that these are not actually overlapping. Whereas over here we've got a universal set as well, but this time set A and B are overlapping and set C is standing alone. So for example, if this was um, the factors of six, and this was the factors of 12, then we know that there would be some common factors between 6 and 12. For example, you'd have 2, 3, and 6, and 1 in here. And then obviously there'd be numbers that not. And if this, for example, was the, I don't know, oh yes, factors um, of, five excluding one. There you go. And this would be all the numbers out there. So do you understand that you can have overlapping sets as well as separate sets that don't overlap? Now that is how a Venn diagram helps us picture what relationships we have between the sets. Now first what you need to know is the union of sets. The union of sets is known as or and we've spoken about union before. So when we say or we mean everything. So union means or. So in other words if I had to write this, I would write A union B union C. That would mean I want numbers, all the numbers in A and B and C, or A or B or C. In other words, if we had to say, for example, this was the factors of 6, this was the factors of 12, and this was the factors of 4, five, let's think about your factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. Let's just make it into pretty bracket. Your factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3 and 6. Your factors of um, 5 are going to be 1 and 5. So you'll see that this one is in all three of them. Factors of 6 is going to be 2, 3 and 6 and your factors of 12 that are not in that are going to be 4 and 12 and here would be number 5 over there. Factors of 5. So do you see how you can have all these numbers would be the union. So the union of this, the union would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 12. The numbers in this or this or this, that's the union. The intersection is what is only in each of these. So if again I was looking at let's say set A be the factors of 6, so let's make it 1, 2, 3 and 6 and set B be the factors of 12 again. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 and 12. And then set C B, set C be the factors of 5, so it'd be 1, 5. Right. Then do you agree the only number that is in all three of these is going to be 1, which is going to be, a, in fact, let me change color so you can see it a little bit better. So this is the number 1. Okay, what is in both 2A and B 
is 2, 3, and 6. So 2, 3, and 6 are in both A and B, so they'll be at 2, 3, and 6. 1 is going to be there, okay, so there's nothing left to set A only. Set B, we've used up 1, so what are you left with? We're just left with 4 and 12, and set C is just 5 by itself. So A intersection C, A intersection C is just going to be the set of empty, it's an empty set. There is nothing that is intersecting in just A, set A and C. Similarly, the intersection of B and C is an empty set, but the intersection of A and B, let me just do this in a different color as well, the intersection of A and B is just this bit here, the intersection of A and B, in other words, what is in both set A and set B, which is 2, 3, and 6. So that set there would be 2, 3, and 6. And finally, the intersection of all three, the only number that is in all, all three, is this number here in the middle, which in this case is, if you look, it's 1, 1, 1. So the intersection of all three is 1. So intersection means and. It has to be in all three. This one and that one and that one. Okay? Union is all. So it can either be in set A or in set B or in set C. Right. Let's move on. The complement of a set is not that set. So for example, the complement of set B is going to be everything in set A that's not in set B. Everything in set C that's not in set B and everything else in the universal set. So saying it like that is a nightmare. So instead what we say, we say it is the complement of B or we say it is not B. It's the same as saying not B. So we've already covered this a couple of times, but let's go through this. If things are mutually exclusive, it means that if there is A union B is the sum of the two, okay, but there is no intersection. So if they're mutually exclusive, then A intersection B is an empty set. Whereas they're not mutually exclusive, then they overlap. And if they overlap, then A intersection B does not equal an empty set, it equals this little bit of intersection over there. Okay, so let's do an example, and I'm going to change color to this one. It says there are 220 boys in grade 11, 160 play rugby, 110 play cricket, and 70 play rugby and cricket. So first of all, it says illustrate this information in a Venn diagram. So I'm going to draw a big square or rectangle because that's going to be for my sample space, my sample space. And then I'm going to draw a squircle, which I call my circles when I draw them badly, another squircle. And I'm going to call this squircle rugby and this squircle cricket. Okay, now do we agree that they've told us that 70 play rugby and cricket. So 70 boys play rugby and cricket. So that means the intersection of the rugby and the cricket is 70. But now they tell us that there were 160 people in total that play rugby. So 70 of those play both rugby and cricket. So therefore the people left, the boys left that just play rugby are going to be 160 minus 70 which equals 90. So therefore we've got 90 boys that just play rugby. Now let's go look at the cricket. They tell us 110 boys play cricket but of that 70 play both rugby and cricket. So if we take 110 minus my 70, we end up with 40. So 40 boys only play cricket. Now we were told there were 220 boys in the grade 11. So let's check if this adds up to 220. So we've got 90 plus 70 plus our 40. 
that gives you a zero and 9 and 7 is 16 plus 4 is 200 so therefore we've got 200 boys that play either rugby or rugby and cricket or just cricket which means that in our sample space we have 20 boys that are outside these sets that don't play anything so now we have illustrated our Venn diagram. Now it says find the probability that a boy chosen at random plays rugby or cricket. So he plays rugby or cricket. Now remember the addition rule says this, that we have to take everything from that plus everything from that and then we subtract the middle bit. But we don't actually have to do that for the simple reason that we have already worked out our Venn diagram. So we can say that the probability that a boy plays rugby or cricket is going to be 90 out of 220 plus 40 out of 220. We don't have to subtract the overlap because we have already excluded it in that, which works out to be over 220, 1940 is 130, so we cancel that becomes 13 over 22. So the probability, and if we do that on a calculator, 13 divided by 22, it works out to be works out to be 0.59 or 59%. So that is the probability of me getting that boy will play either rugby or cricket. The way that they did it on the notes is they did the last lesson, they went probability of rugby or cricket was they went, okay fine, there are 160 boys that play rugby out of 220 plus your 110 play cricket over 220 minus the overlap of 70 over 220 and you will find you'll get exactly the same answer of 59%. So by doing our Venn diagram, we could say, okay, fine, well, these dudes here play rugby and these dudes here play cricket. So it went rugby or cricket, not rugby and cricket. Now, how many people play neither rugby or cricket? Well, these 20 kids over here don't play either rugby or cricket. So therefore, the probability of you playing not rugby or cricket, which is really the complement of these two sets, is going to be 20 over the 220, which is going to be 1 over 11. Or if we put that in our calculators, that becomes 9%. 9% or 0.09. So there you go, grade 11s. That's how we use Venn diagrams to solve a problem like this. Please go practice, 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 and then do the questions at the end of the assessment. Have a lovely day.